Good weekend, Linda. Happy Sunday. Yes. It Sunday is Sunday. Sunday. We're here having fun making videos for you, right? <laughs> yes. And we're also making a ton of money according to this screen. Yeah. It was a good week. No. Uh, thank good you. Mom. Don't worry, guys. But we are going to do a pretty unique video today. I kind of dragged Linda in on this one. I wanted to be able to show people how they can upgrade from QuickBooks Online to QuickBooks Desktop and the process that you have to go through because it's not like – they don't make it the easiest thing to do, right? Wait a minute. Did you just say upgrade? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Okay. Today's so, a good day. <laughs> well, it goes along with my hybrid solution, right? It's, it's yes. We use QuickBooks Desktop, and then we use technology like QBox with VendorSync, our cloud solutions, to make desktop just as powerful. So um, I figured we should probably show people how they can take that uh, QuickBooks Online company file, especially if it might be changing its own level soon, and bring it to uh, desktop. To yeah, I don't, there's no cap, right, on the chart of accounts in desktop? No, um, but let's get started. What do you think? Go for it. Okay. So the first and foremost, the most important thing with this is you have to do this with Internet Explorer. And when I'm talking about Internet Explorer, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I'm not talking about the fancy new E. I'm talking about the old outdated E. Okay? <laughs> it's really, really important. <laughs> uh, and then additionally, when you're doing that, for this to work right, you need to come into your uh, Internet Options go to your security settings, and you need to drop them down. If you have your security settings up, I've actually disabled the protected mode, and by doing that, I don't have any difficulties going through this process. Now, I don't usually use Internet Explorer, so it's not one of those things I have to be worried about all these other sites and this and that, but by doing this, I, I've, not, I've not had any difficulties converting files rather consistently. I think you'd be hard pressed to know if anybody uses Internet Explorer at this point in time, right? <laughs> to upgrade their QuickBooks online company file to QuickBooks desktop. Yeah, that's about it. So then the next step, we're going to go to the gear icon, and we're going to go to export the data. From the export data, they're going to give you this nice little pop-up because they're very interested to know exactly what's going on. I'm sure they want to see how many people are going to uh, desktop for the first time or going back to so forth. Uh, you can just exit out and not give them the information if you don't want to. Um, and I think this is where a lot of people actually start to get stuck. This is a really cool new thing they've done where you can export your information to Excel, which is cool. But if you really want to go to desktop, you actually have to come down and click here and go learn more. That's interesting. I haven't, see, I haven't done this in a while, but that's nice to know because a lot of times businesses close and it's, a good way if they're leaving online to just get everything into Excel and you know be, be done with it. But you should do it per year though. Once you get your finance, get your financials out per year if you're going to export for that reason. Yeah, I mean, well, so that's not necessarily like the P and Ls and such. It's going to be like your list items and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So you, you, what's actually the best what I would suggest is if you're trying to get the historical data. So if we're doing like a rebuild of a file. We'll export the old file to desktop so we can store a backup of it and have that information. Mm -hmm. um, that way they don't have to maintain another license just to keep that old information. Yeah, that's a great tip. Um, another thing, we'll put this URL into our guide into the video. Uh, I believe if you basically, oops, if you type the right thing in, which if it didn't copy correctly, let's try it again. Copy. As long as you have that company file open, it should kind of shortcut you straight to that screen. Oh, cool. Yes. So we'll put that in. Um, and again, export lists and balances. We're going to say we're going to download the company data. From here, this gives you kind of the overview of all the different steps. The next thing that's going to happen, you can see they keep trying to export to Excel, go to Excel, trying to basically scare you away from desktop, but just keep going forward. If this is the first time you've done this, and because the ActiveX controller is so much older and it only works for Internet Explorer, that's why we have to do it in this browser. And if you have the install clicked here, you'll have to actually install it. It's just a click a button, go through the process, super easy. But you'll have to do that, and then you go back into QuickBooks Online again, go back through the first steps to get to this point, and then you can continue. 
Now, when you get to this point, I always recommend it's a good time to make sure you have QuickBooks desktop open. When I tried this just recently with 2019, I did experience challenges. 2018 worked perfectly. Uh, there could be a lot of reasons for that, but I think it's probably smart to stick to like 2018 um, and you'll be fine until I like, get the other part fixed. If you, I'm sure you saw there, I've got QuickBooks open, but I'm not actually in a company file at all. That's really, really important, okay? Then I'm gonna come back over and I'm gonna choose whether I want my financial data or if I, and the transactions, or if I just want the financial data, basically. Um, condensed file is a good way to say it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose everything, hit continue. And now for me, I've already gone through this process, so it's telling me, hey, I can either start over and request the information be sent to me, or like uh, uh, they will notify me when the file is ready, or I can click continue to download. What that would look like, I'm gonna go back here, if I go to my dashboard, I'll actually get an email notification once the file is ready, and then you will see on the dashboard mm -hmm. this notification where it says take action. Because that can take so long, anywhere between, I've seen it five minutes up to 30 minutes sometimes, we're obviously achieving and now we're just gonna go and do continue to download instead, okay? Again, because we've already downloaded it, it's saying, well, you can browse to find it or you just download it. We're gonna download on purpose because I want you to see exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. First thing, you're gonna see that little box like this. This comes in two different times into the process and they do a horrible job of making this really small little box that hides really important information. Uh, for us, everything I'm doing desktop, we always come in and we actually create a brand new folder in our documents, QuickBook desktop. I recommend doing this also. Uh, and it gives you a place to save this file because the, the name of it, export underscore company dot QBXML, that cannot be modified. If you modify that at all, it will not work. So super important. I think my dog's collar off right there. <laughs> I, I know when I've done this in the past, I've been sitting here waiting going, what's going on? And it's been behind a window. So it's, yeah. you know, you've got it in the front and it can be oh, there. No, you don't even know. Mm -hmm. So I haven't changed it. Still says the same thing. Click save. Boom, goes real fast. You're going to get this convert now. And this is the one you're talking about, Linda, where it will hide on you at times. Mm -hmm. so I click convert now. Now this one, I can name it whatever I want. It's in the same folder I just created it, which is why I like to move it that way. Because if you just go to your downloads, if you have to do it more than once, it's mm -hmm. going to try to overwrite the other. And That's a great tip. I have not done it that way, so it's a great tip. It's also interesting because you end up having a backup. Like if you were to choose to just backup the file, that QBXM file is exactly what you would get. Um, so I'm going to name it, save it. I'm going to watch for this to flash at me, as well as, and don't get crazy pushing it 12 times. Push it once, <laughs> be patient, try to let it find itself in a sense. And if you have multiple monitors, make sure you're seeing all the different monitors where it could be at. So see, we clicked it once, gave it some time. I'm gonna say, I always go uh, yes whenever this is open for this situation. You can do yes uh, prompt each time and go continue. Just basically tells you the basic details. Boom, now I come back here. Here's that window I'm telling you about. Mm -hmm. All you see is cancel conversion. You're like, well, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> go like that. Super important. It will save your sanity because if it's a really, really, really big file, you'll see this thing inching along and you'll feel much better about the process. How many people do you think have just clicked cancel conversion because they didn't realize you could just drag it over and make it a bigger, like that's what you're supposed to do or something because it does look kind of odd. I would say I probably did that myself at least 20 <laughs> times. Because you go to the blue bar, right? It's like, oh, there's the button. Let's click it. <laughs> Stick a button in front of me. I'm going to push it. <laughs> like, I am not the guy to watch the nukes, okay? That is not a good job for me. <laughs> and you're in this Groundhog Day thing, yeah. doing the cycle over and over again. <laughs> That's why, like, uh, as we wait for time here, I'm thinking of changing my title to Chief Squirrel Catcher. <laughs> I think that's probably the best. I'm just going to video you coming out of the airplane in that yeah. suit. 
Um, so now, of course, it's telling you, congratulations, good to go, yay. And your company file is now here. I really wish you would pop open a window so it actually looks like something is done. Um, because That's a little scary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you don't want to interrupt it. So then you go in, go to your chart of accounts, take a look, uh, you know, vendor center, uh, customers. I was interested to see that they've actually updated this to where if you have projects set up in QuickBooks Online, they do actually come in as a job. Mm. Customers. Yeah. Um, you, of course, would also go through and you should be running your just as if you were going to be going from desktop to online, you should always have all of your accounts reconciled ahead of time. You should uh, run your profit and loss. You should run a balance sheet or cool basis for both. Um, and then you should basically get everything pulled in and then run those same reports again in desktop at this time to make sure everything is matching correctly. Um, do you have to re-reconcile too, just like when you do the other way? Re-reconcile the bank account back to where it was? Good question. I don't remember, and I don't know that I've actually um, done any reconciliations yet. Because this is our fake file that we do the... I know. Um, I think you would have to redo reconciliations. Probably, right? It's, it, as long as you've done them ahead of time, it'll be pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you just do one big giant yeah. one, make it match, especially if the numbers match. Yep. And then, of course, if you're doing this, then if you have to go in and you need to be able to catch up a whole bunch of data because maybe you're starting it from the beginning of the year and now it's almost April 15th, well, <laughs> then you could always come in, check out Vendor Sync, which can help you get all those bank transactions in in a much more efficient manner. The true hybrid solution. What do you, what do you think? That's pretty cool. I mean, that was very simple. And I have had it where I've had... And one of the few times I've had to call support was that I couldn't figure out I had to have help and they had to fix something in Explorer because I'm not a PC person. That makes it a little harder to, you know, I have a Mac. So I had to go onto my PC and they fixed it. But I mean, the hidden windows, I remember the first time I did it, it was like, what's going on? Is it done? Is it, you don't want to interrupt it, like you said. Yeah. Um, pretty soon, I'm, I have heard a rumor from some of our friends up north that QuickBooks Online Canada is not able to be upgraded to desktop uh, because of some of their tax ramifications of their tax program. Mm -hmm. So I just registered, just signed up for my own QuickBooks Online Accountant Canadian Pro Advisor account. Hey. Um, and I'm going to see if I can break it for them up there. I don't know. Uh -huh. we'll That'll be fun. <laughs> on that note we'll put some extra links into the video we'll um, link back to Intuit has a huge huge list of all the things that do and do not transfer there are certain length limitations like on names that are different that you should be aware of um, you know just to make sure when you're you're going from one platform to another you can really be cautious on it so um, you think you lose any features at all is there any features you lose because I think desktop has a few more than online right you know, the big, I feel the biggest thing that is really lost, there's two things that are lost by going from online to desktop. The first one is the ease of collaboration uh, to where you can have multiple people in the same company file all at the exact same time. 100% mm -hmm. honest, pure transparency, I mean, that's the greatest thing, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, which I would normally say would be the bank feeds. Bank feeds, having the direct connection, but nowadays, that, I mean, that's the whole point of like the remote accounts toolbox or workflow where we use QBox with desktop and vendor sync. Use QBox to grab your client's company file, bring it back over. Mm -hmm. While you're bringing it over, you go to your bank account. You can go grab the, the transactions, the statements, the check images, or even better, use our good friends at Ledger Sync and they can help do that for you. And then when you have that data, you run it through vendor sync to process them just to, like the fastest way possible through our use of the aliases and payee names, which we're pulling direct, directly from the desktop file. So it really is about as close as you can get to the cloud environment in your, with the hybrid solution. Sounds like it, it really does. I mean, I, I know from, that was the main reason I moved a lot of people and originally from desktop to online was for the reason the bank feeds. I was slow to move to it. And then when I saw how great the bank feeds are, but then when I've watched you fly through vendor sync and 
actually, the, even the vendor names come in better. It doesn't look as messy and, and stuff when you do it through vendor sync. It's very, very clean. Well, it's, it's actually pulling the, the direct list from QuickBooks. But yeah. we should do that in a different video. So yeah. <laughs> on, as always, we hope that our videos are helping somebody out there. And more importantly, as always, here's wishing you a very successful week. Happy Sunday.